Now on the optical receiver end, I'm going to hook up a photo transistor. And what you'll notice about it is it doesn't have a base sleeve, it just has a collector and an emitter and a little glass bubble, a plastic bubble, focusing on the base region. The light that's coming in is going to excite the base in place of having a base current and cause a variation in collector current that's proportional to it. What we got coming in though is a DC level at the LED lit, about 480 microamps. And then riding on top of that is an AC signal which contains the information about our voice or whatever sounds we're putting in. Now we need to bias the transistor in the active region and so I put a pot here in series with a small resistor so I can vary this and adjust it such that the voltage across here is somewhere in the active region. So we'll have to play with this circuit per circuit. It depends on your transistor and also about the amount of ambient light that's in the room. We're going to block the DC level, which is this ambient light amplified, and I'm just going to take the AC component and feed it to uh, this voltage divider and then this power amplifier, which we had built in the 203 lab, and we'll talk a lot about in the next week's lab. That will give us a gain of one plus the resistor ratio, but allow us to have more current for a speaker. I can do an analysis on the amplifier component here, again doing a DC operating point. We don't really have a base current now, we just have a collector emitter current that's a function of that base current as it excited the electrons and holes in the base region. Let's assume the resistor actually is 47k, so that the voltage across here is just going to be 9 volts minus the drop across the 47k, so you could adjust the value of the resistor here to get this somewhere in the active region. And the AC beta will just be the beta F of our transistor. And then for an AC analysis, we'll have a short circuit for the battery, short circuit for the capacitor. And we see the pot on this end, it's tapped off and fed to the opium circuit, but, but we see 50K here, and, and that's roughly in parallel with the 47K, or whatever we set the pot equal to. So the, the AC collector emitter voltage is going to be this current times the parallel combination, which would be about half the value of the resistor if they're both 50k. Again, we've got some DC results plus some AC results. The DC results depend on what our light level coming in is. And then we've got this AC result over here. The voltage that's coming into this voltage divider, I called the, my previous page here, let's go back to the top of it, I call this V1. And we're going to take a fraction of V1 and feed it to this op amp circuit. And so the AC signal that's coming in, the collector emitter voltage, this part over here is what's uh, passed. The capacitor is blocking this DC level. We'll see a gain of 1 plus the resistor ratio, and then a voltage divider with uh, the rotation of the pot. And in the past, we've been referring to that as alpha, where alpha is between 0 and 1. So we, we have 11 times alpha. V1 is just equal to this. If, if beta f were 100, then we're looking at about 26.6 million times the base current that's being received by the phototransistor. And this would be having alpha set all the way to the top of the pot. So you have quite a bit of gain for the current that's coming in. And again, I had to play with this with this specific LEDs to get this to sound pretty smooth or decent. So in lab 10, we're looking at making a high gain amplifier. And let me explain one other idea. With op amps, when you purchase them, they usually come with a data sheet. We'll look at this more in follow-on courses, but almost all op amps have a rating called gain bandwidth product. Uh, for the op amp that we've been using for this course, the 741, the gain bandwidth product is one one megahertz. And what that means is that, that the, roughly the product of gain and bandwidth is relatively constant. So if I had a gain of 5,000, then I'm talking about a frequency, if I divide that into here, of about 200 hertz. So if I were to use a single op amp, I can only get a bandwidth of about 200 hertz, and I need to have the whole audio band. We could use multiple op amps to, to build this up. In fact, we'll do this in the next lab. But for BJTs, they have gain bandwidth products in the 100 megahertz range, so it's possible to get a real high gain amplifier in the audio band. That's what we saw in this last example, that we had gains on the order of 10,000. The concepts that we covered in this lab are analysis of BJTs in a phototransistor, likewise AC models, and then a multi-stage amplifier analysis and an optical amplifier as a receiver. In lab, we're going to learn how to measure the 3 dB bandwidth of an amplifier. And this is lab 10, an amplitude modulated optical transmitter and receiver.